All right, today we are looking at voltage dividers, and voltage dividers are a very common electronic component. And all it is is a series circuit which taps off smaller voltages from a larger voltage source. So in the picture that you see here, the voltage divider itself is R1, R2, and R3. So a very simple series circuit with three resistors in it and a 28 volts applied. Now, uh, test point one is where your tap-off point is for this particular voltage divider. So when you look at voltage dividers, you look at loaded and unloaded voltage. We're going to start with unloaded voltage. Now, typically that is represented by VO or EO. V or E, of course, referring to voltage, and the O um, indicates that it is unloaded. Um, we typically like to think of the O as standing for open, so the switch is open, there is no load applied to the circuit when we are looking at VO or EO, which is that unloaded voltage. All right, so where we start is total resistance, and very simple, all of you that have been through our circuits with our series and our parallel and then our series parallel combinations, this is really easy math. We're just going to add up our three resistors to get total resistance which ends up being 14,000 ohms. Next, of course, would be total current, because remember, we're looking for an amount of voltage at our test point, at our tap-off point. So in order to get voltage, we're gonna need current, so we can take current and multiply it by our ohmic value. So total current, of course, we know is voltage divided by resistance. So we take 28 divided by our total resistance of 14K, and we get a total current of two milliamps. Um, now, our tap-off point, when we look at the tap-off point, we would measure from ground to test point one. So you would have um, your black lead on ground, your red lead on test point one, and of course you were reading across R3, the only thing in between uh, test point one and ground when S1 is open is R3. And in that case, you are only looking for the voltage drop of R3. If our tap-off point had been above R2, then we would have been looking for the voltage of both R2 and R3, because again, we're looking for ground to our tap-off point, wherever that may be. All right, in this case, um, because our tap-off point is right above R3, we are reading across R3, so to get the voltage there, we are looking for the voltage of R3. To do that, we would use Ohm's Law, and we would take the ohmic value of R3, which is 10,000 ohms, multiply it by total current, which is 2 milliamps, and we see that we have 20 volts at our tap-off point when the circuit is unloaded. So EO or VO would be 20 volts. Okay, so um, let's take a moment to look at a few components here. So we know that R3, which is the component that we read across, has total current um, at the time that it is unloaded. So its current is 2 milliamps, um, and it has a voltage drop of 20 volts, which would be the um, voltage drop, the unloaded voltage at our tap-off point. So that's where we're starting with this. We're going to go to the next slide, and that's when we're going to look at it loaded. So here we go at a loaded voltage divider. And you'll see over on the far side, um, on the far left there, we have the percent of regulation put out, but we're not going to talk about that right now. Right now we are just going to talk about our loaded voltage. Okay, so you'll notice now switch S1 is closed. With switch S1 closed, we now go from a series to a series parallel. And now we have our load resistor, which is 10K, in parallel with R3, which is also 10K, which is going to make our REQ for this circuit 5K ohms. So we're going to look at some of those things. So first off, um, the voltage at your test point when your circuit is loaded is called either V out or E out. So I like to think of that as we have current out to the load device. So the switch is closed. 
And of course, um, again, we start with total resistance, and total resistance in this case starts with REQ, which is the combination of R3's ohmic value and our load. So we have 5K, we add that to our other two 2K resistors to get a total resistive value for the circuit now of 9K ohms. Again, we're going to look for current um, because we're ultimately looking for an amount of voltage. So we need to figure out uh, what our total current is so we can multiply it by our ohmic value to get voltage. We take our 28 divided by our total resistance now of 9K ohms and we get a total current of 3.11 milliamps. Now, um, we are still measuring at test point one, so we're measuring from ground to test point one. Our black lead is on ground, our red lead is on test point one, so we are reading across our parallel of R3 and our load device. So the ohmic value of that is 5K ohms. We take our 5K ohms and we multiply that by our 3.11 milliamps and we get a total voltage of 15.56 volts at our tap-off point and that is V out or the voltage out um, when current is applied to our load device. So now we have both the voltage out and we have we have our loaded voltage and we have our unloaded voltage so we can go and do percent of regulation. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about what current and voltages and resistance values and all that's doing. When you looked at your circuit originally, when it was unloaded, R3 saw total current, which was 2 milliamps. Now, we find that R3's current actually decreases when the load is applied because even though total current goes up to 3.11 milliamps, that is evenly split because both R3 and our load device are 10k ohms, 10,000 ohms, and because they are, our current would be evenly split between the two branches. So we would actually see um, right around 1.6 milliamps on each branch, a little less than that actually, but we would see an equal value on each branch. So R3, which used to see 2 milliamps of total current when it was when the circuit was unloaded now sees less than 2 milliamps it's actually closer to 1.5 milliamps so we see that the current through um, the resistor within our um, loaded area is actually going down because it is split between the two components but total current went up and we also see that total resistance went down and those two make perfect sense because we know that total resistance and total current are inversely proportional. All right, remember we talked about um, ohmic values and voltage drops following our ohmic values. It's no surprise then that even though total current went up, our voltage drop follows the much lower ohmic value that we now have in our parallel. And so it went from 20 volts to 15.56 volts, which is a much smaller voltage. All right, now that we've talked about all of that, we're going to look over here at our percent of regulation on the left-hand side. So the percent of regulation formula is that first one that's up there. So that's that VO minus V out divided by V out times 100 gives you um, the percentage. So we're going to start with our unloaded voltage, which was 20 volts, and subtract our loaded voltage, which was 15.56 volts. And then once you get that answer, you'll divide it by 15.56, and then multiply that by 100. And you get a value of 28.53%. That is actually a very inefficient voltage divider. Um, uh, pretty much standard um, is 20% or less is considered a relatively efficient voltage divider. Obviously, the closer you can get, the better. But 28.53 would be well above our 20%, and we would consider this a, a pretty poor voltage divider. It would be very inefficient. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video on voltage dividers. I know we went a bit longer than we typically do. Um, next, we will cover bridge circuits.